And we're back with game number two between Rogue Warriors and RNG. And I didn't expect to be talking about game two like this, but uh, Rogue Warriors kind of stomped RNG. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. A lot of dive throughout. Watian in particular played incredibly well. But now I'm ready for that game two action, man. I want to see if Rogue Warriors can take it. I'm just going to say it. It was, it was a dope game one. I'm going to be honest. And this is real fun. Once again, RNG going back to what's standard. A lot of protection there from the driver and Galios. They have now a very straightforward composition. Well, uh, Rogue Warriors still trying to keep that core of Kled. Uh, they got the Ezreal away from RNG. And they have a lease. So from Rogue Warriors side, they lost the magic. They lost the magic. You got to put it out there. But I wonder if they can really bring it together. I mean, Jalion's still in the Kled. That's a good thing. That's true. And I think he's able to show himself on that pick, but Huatian's Aurelia has actually been pretty successful. It's one of his best scorelines, 7-0 and 10. So while that was earlier in the split, and it wasn't exactly when he was being very impressive, he does have precedence on the champion. Yeah, I just want to see the game come through. I mean, at this point, no one wants to look at my ugly mug and just, like, talk about the picks. They want to see the p picks actually play out. So let's just move to it. I want to see it come through. Suzu on Elise is an interesting one because it really is just about proper timing. Uh, when you can get Zhao Yun and Hua Tian ahead. This time around, if he can hit it, he has great bruisers in their solo lanes. I want to be able to see if Suzu can get those lanes rolling quickly. We're going to find out where, I mean, we're getting in right now. You see the ceremonial deer there on the side of the cliff of Summoner's Rift. You know what that means. It's time for game number two, RNG and RW. Never gets old, Raz. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't. Oh, one thing I will say, though, I've never seen that chroma or skin on the Aurelia in my life. And I, I also, I. I haven't watched the Neon Eve like Evangelion thing, but I feel like that's what it's referenced to. Like, I'm almost certain. People out there right now can either confirm or deny based you know, on my Twitter. I will watch the show at some point, but I'm just going to go out on the limb and say she looks like a character. I like how you defended preemptively the fact that you said you hadn't seen it. Like, I've seen I will watch it. I, I promise. But, like, tell me if I'm right. But I'll watch it. I swear. I'm, I, I'm certain. Okay. I, I know enough. It's an old enough show. I watched a lot of old shows out there, like Yu Yu Yuku's show. But no one cares about my goddamn anime viewing experience. I think you're wrong there. I think a lot of people care. No one us. cares. <laughs> it's I like think a lot of people care. No one cares. I care. That's not a good. It's not good enough. <laughs> it's not good enough. I'm sorry Yikes. to explain it to you. But going into the level one, you already saw the pause coming through. But thankfully... We're already we're already ahead of schedule, baby. We can see we are like this game has been recorded. If the magic is already not on there, so we can actually just speed it on up to see how long that pause is going through. That's right. So it's one of the beauties of the LPL. We get to do that kind of thing. Yeah, it's great. You know, there are so many venues in the LPL. A lot of them do like the games do end up overlapping. So a lot of people wonder like, well, why do games actually come in at the same time? Well, guess what? If I'm watching the games in Beijing and a game in Chengdu hasn't ended yet. Does that impact me? Hell no. I want to watch the games when it's supposed to start at 5 p.m. God damn it. They're going to get to. They're going to get to, Raz. And now, RNG off to a good start. I don't see anything too particularly strange there in those rune choices. But I do see Huanga getting real low. The counter, uh, you know, punish that you get from both <laughs> Galio and, uh, you know, Kaisa is actually quite a bit. So Alistair, if he ever finds himself going all in, he, he will not get that same kind of pressure from Ezreal. He has to watch out from this one. Uh, one rune that actually did get my eye is Rise going on Phase Rush. I know that's a constant, but we've been seeing a lot of um, Aftershock Rises as well. That's usually if he's in a pretty rough matchup and needs to be able to keep himself up in lane. This time around, he's going up against it really. He has the range over her. Obviously uh -oh. has to watch out for any like stuns that she goes for. Speaking of watching now, Suju, get out of there. Run. Run, little spider. Scuttle. Scuttle away. <laughs> Scuttle slowly. He's good. I think he's going to make it. But he is going to be behind on CS because of this. An experience. Kars is just wasting a lot of his time. And that's that's really dangerous for Elise because she is such an early game tempo-oriented jungler. I just uh, you know, got word from someone in the back, someone up there, upstairs, telling me that the Lubu skin that right now Jarvan is rolling around with is super impactful versus what is wearing Three Kingdoms characters. That's the whole theme, just so people know that Rogue Warriors have been rolling around with. As I say that, Zhao Yun being not oh, keeping no. to the th theme. No! No! You pocket pistoled backwards, Zhao Yun! Oh, uh, no. He's dead. Yeah. 
He's just there's there's no way out of this for him. I love you, Zhao Yun, but oh, oh maybe he can. Maybe no. oh no. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's first blood. So uh, just so you know, each individual pellets give you so much courage back. So you're so close to being able to pick up Skarl. Use two of them. One to shoot himself backwards. The other one on the wave. That just sucks. He was. I was I was kind of hoping for the outplay at the same time, but that was pretty much a foregone conclusion. He did waste a lot of their time. He was really close to coming back up. Honestly, if he had held the second pocket pistol, I think he was fine. But that's just what happens. Life doesn't, you know, isn't so beneficial. Remember, Uzi fairly low, headbutt pulverized there from one guy, and he comes in oh. you. He's going on to the support, however. Ignite's gone down. Oh no, Tower takes him out. Ming. No, Shutsu, why are you diving still? He gets taken out the double kill no for the way. support of RNG, and now Zhang Wuji gets flashed on by Uzi. He is so low on health. Uzi doesn't have the heal, neither does Zhang Wuji. He's got TP, nothing he can do. The uh. W auto, is it there? Anything? Getting beat down by the minion wave. Get out of here. But that was real funny. By the way, towers do a lot of damage. And they ramp up quite frequently. It doesn't matter if you change targets. It's going to keep ramping. So such a great defense from RNG's bottom lane. I thought they were going to be going for the 80 carries, but they went for the opposite target. I guess we were holding on to this replay for so long. We just wanted to see Zhao Yun cry. Uh, he was, this is how, how close he was. Even flashing through, and he kept onto the pocket pistol, as I mentioned. I think he was going to get close. It was really dicey, but close enough. Speaking of it, the play is happening topside, but we already see the... Chunk that was so close going taken down Ming, but he was able to heal right back up, I think, from Triumph. If I'm certain on that one. So he keeps himself alive a little bit longer. And I don't even want to see this chase. This is the saddest chase of my life. But there is so much fighting in this game. This is absolutely ridiculous. Rogue Warrior is going to make it out of this one, but in the top lane, they did take down Amazing Jack. I love the fact that Rogue Warriors are just biting, just trying to hit them early. Because if you try and slow up, uh, play a slower game versus Karsa, Shahu, Uzi, and Ming, there are problems. Like, they will be able to understand how to play oh, it no. out. Here it comes. They are so boned. Like, I don't think Huang Gai, oh, what a, what a wonderful support, sacrificing himself for the AD carry. But that does require Zhang Wuji to not go back under tower. And at least Zhang Wuji will pick up some of the experience. So he didn't get completely zoned out. But you're right. Huang Gai, come out. Help him a little bit. It's rough. But that's what I'm talking about. RNG getting surprised. Shocked early in this series, but how angry. Not angry. <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe angry. But definitely there's a lot of aggression coming in the side from Rogue Warriors that's just been frequent, constant. And the fact that there's this many skirmishes that people in the back, the, produ the producers have to be throwing replays at us, it makes it harder for teams, you know, really consistent because they get picked up like this so easily. Zhao Yun having a, having a better lane this time, at the very least, if yep. nothing else. But the rest of the map is also not having the same advantage as last game, so I'm a little bit worried for Rogue Warriors here. I'll say this, uh, Amazing J in the laning phase has been really uninspiring. I know that he's been picking up matchups that aren't too good, but he's not acting as if he's in a bad matchup. Pressing up so far forward when his jungler is not in the area, that's not how you play that. And so in that instance, he wanted to completely shove it out. Didn't have the wars to be able to catch out Suzu. Probably didn't have the call for Karsi to come up to, to protect that push. There's so much not happening there. And this is not the first time for Amazing Day to be put in this position. It's been numerous times. Been losing 1v1 too, even when he's in a pretty decent matchup. So it's just been a rough time around uh, for Amazing Jay in the previous weeks. Gonna be having a little bit more struggle time this game against Zhao Yun, who's doing pretty well. He's got the triple longsword. I like to see that level of... Uh Build consistency, so to speak, Raz. He's like, I, I like longsword for this back. We need what about four this back? Longswords. Yeah, I want yeah. another longsword for this back. I think this is a good one. That's what makes so many of these assassins so good. Is that you just, they're all great recipes. Tiamat, love it. Black Lo Cleaver, love it. Right? There's just so many longswords that can just build into it. So it's nice, it's efficient, but they're getting opened up on. Yeah, Huan Tian, that's an efficient gank onto him. Four versus one, and there's not a whole lot they're going to be able to do about that. They might try and contest this for the blue, but they do not have the man advantage for it. I mean, RNG have been relentless on this side of the map. So you're saying you maybe misspoke when you said that Rogue Warriors were angry game one, but I, I think I'm feeling a little bit of anger here from RNG. 100%, this is angry. Whatever was happening in the seven or so minutes in the back when they were discussing this game, it must have been, like, I think they must have added that two-minute hate in there. <laughs> so they just have, like, rogue warriors seen as villains coming into this one, so. Anti-meditation. Yep. 
It's like, okay, I want you to empty your mind of everything except pure hatred. We'll see if it's effective. Here comes Carson. Carson looking for the gank here, but Shuju is here to answer. Oh, they get the be better angle on this. No interrupt on the flag and drag. And now, good ultimate there, but they will take down Car, so the response is on to Huang Gai. Once again, the sacrificial, well, bull as it were. But Zhang Wuji going to pick up another kill for his team. Uzi gets his kill here. So it's Zhang Wuji that ended up going for the assist because it was Alistar that get the kill. So if I'm just talking about kill distribution here, I'm a little happier with how RD was able to get the kill on towards Uzi. So nice job there. One thing that I'm interested in is how uh, Uzi's been building, because 9.5, uh, or 9.4 I mean, uh, Kai'Sa has gone towards two things. There's Blade of the Rune King early, like level, like first item Blade of the Rune King, or first item Infinity Edge. And I really like first item Infinity Edge, just because it's able to, you get the level upgrade on Q a lot faster, so it's kind of that, you know, Storm Razors, uh, you know, replacement and it gets you to your crit a little bit more so i like that i'm a fan of that blade of the rune king i saw it get picked up once it's fine later on in the game but it just feels so bad oh, oh no that's the ultimate that dive down onto carson he's like i got this oh Zhao you enforced a flash over the wall that's so unfortunate oh, no. it was such a great engage but he just didn't think about the rest of the map and now pocket pistol gonna save him for now rogue warriors here to try and support him not gonna be able to find it keeper's verdict will knock up huang guy but hua tian there with a flawless duet to save his support that was sad. Yao Yun should have been rewarded for what was a pretty sick dive, but right, it was it, it turned into a dive. And so the fact that Jarvan was able to get out of that one, flag and drag, flash. I mean, Karza, at least he had the mechanics and cool mind to be able to get him out of there. So unfortunate. And now, I, this kind of begs the question, Raz. Give it to me. Is Rogue Warriors in his dire situation this game as RNG were last? when Zhang Wuji started getting those vein kills. I think so. Uh, like, also just remember, all of that hectic factor that Rogue Warriors had in game one is now gone. That it's much easier to pick up mid lane turret, so RNG that had the early game lead last time around should be able to convert it. This was just funny. Zhao uh, Yun went so hard in being able to get the driving kill that he thought was assured, and at the same time, RNG just responded. Oh. He's going to find his way out, but the flash from Bang will secure the kill for him. And now Hua Tian going in. Vanguard's edge onto Xiao Hu. Should be able to pick up the kill there. Huang Gai is the one who takes it. However, Karsa getting incredibly low. Hua Tian still chasing down. Teleport coming in from RNG. But Zhang Wuji is here as well on the flank. Amazing J comes in, but it is too little too late for RNG. They lose two for one. Good call from Rogue Warriors. Backs away immediately the moment the teleport was coming through. So this is what I love to see from a team that has been developing throughout the entire split. Not only is the mechanics starting to come back up for both Hua Tian and Zhao Yun, but also, like, the call, the communication there. Zhao Yun, Zhang Wuji coming in for the team to be able to help out, like, essentially the moment the fight was coming through. So, they're able to match RNG in these fights where previous weeks, let's say three weeks ago, hell no, they're getting smashed. So, this is a lot of great development coming in from Rogue Warriors. The question is how quickly they can develop during this series because they need to be able to win this one. Yeah, so they go all in on him. Uh, this is what the composition was essentially meant for, the all in of Flag Drag into the ultimate from Galio. But once again, the moment Hua Tian comes in on the flank, even Ezreal joins the follow by hopping over the wall. Like this is just great communication and converge from Rogue Warriors to just be able to punish them. Now Hua Tian. Up in CS in this lane against Xiaohu as well. He's proven himself. He's still got it here on the Aurelia. Maybe not as strong as he was on the Echo, but still definitely a shining point for Rogue Warriors. But they need to keep the momentum. They need to stop RNG from running them over. I just want to see what his effectiveness is on team fights because whenever it comes to how Aurelia ends up playing out these fights, it's more so, all right, who does his ultimate land on? It's going to usually land on either Jarvan or Poppy. And then if Uzi gets hit on the outskirts, then great. You have this 90% slow on him. You can be able to just dive straight through onto him. Use the members to get right in. But here's the huge if. Is that Amazing J, if he uses Steadfast Presence, he should be able to hold the Irelia back at those moments. Suddenly, all of that dive threat is not there if Poppy is the one walking forward. So it's all about how Amazing J ends up playing a lot of these team fights if he walks forward and understands his role. Pick up that dragon on the bottom side of the map there. Amazing J will scout out this Rift Herald take. And I... Uh, hello. Shuju. 
Got to be careful, man, especially in this situation. You don't have the pressure across the map. Would have been, I think, better if they were doing that while they were doing the dragon, but afterward just seems a little bit too confident. In solo queue, those kind of plays will, you know, usually go rewarded, where you can, as an Elise, easily pick up the Rift Herald. Like, you're getting that eye no matter what because you have the Spiderlings coming through. Uh, but Amazing J has roamed out of the lane so much. Every time he pushes, he goes for a ward on the Krug camp or checks out the river. Maybe even picks up the Scuttle Crab. So, oh, no. Zhang Wuji, Huang Guy, there's under another, threat. There's another death for Huang Guy. I can see it already. A good flash E away from Zhang Wuji and Huang Guy stuck under tower. Unbreakable will. Zhang Wuji's trying to do what he can to put down the damage. They will have to rip Realm Warp out, though. Huang Guy might oh. survive. There we go. That's what I like to see. That is a fat cow, let me tell you. 100% genuine beef right there. Oh, Zhang, they're going for it. Zhang Wuji has the Iceborne Gauntlet, so they have the slow if they want to go for the chase. Gil was blown from Uzi to keep himself safe. Oh, please, Zhang Wuji, no. Oh, no, Zhang Wuji, he has to get out. He's out. He's hey, in. Vanguard's Edge goes back in. Ming, first one to die. Follow up immediately onto Karsa. Hua Tian is going <laughs> up, but Uzi goes in with a killer instinct. He's able to pick up one, the double kill for Hua Tian. He is now down, and Xiaohu cleanses away, but he gets taken out as well by Shuju. Such a good call from Suju. He needed to take that fight. Otherwise, flash damage is going to get both Huang Guy and Zhang Wuji. He needed to be the one who dealt with Chao Hu, and he was. So that was dicey, man. Zhang Wuji should have watched out there. His mistake, or maybe he was baiting for it. I, I don't know what's going on in the mind yeah. of Zhang Wuji, but I know that he escaped and he allowed Hua Tian to be able to drive straight through. So those string of events were just insane. And really good for Rogue Warriors, because now they've gotten the first tower on the map. They've gotten a lot of perches here in this game where previously yeah. they had none. This is what I'm talking about. Walk right in there. Just channel a worm, essentially. This guy was full bait. And just go straight in, because at that point, it's uh, so easy to get the kill on the two members that are just blinking red HP bars. This is when it gets dicey. Uzi, so close to being able to get the kill. Still gets it anyways on top of Watian, but one guy comes out so low. If Shahu was able to move up a little bit closer to Huang Guy, or of course Zhang Wuji in that instance, that's an easy kill. That's why he's coming up so confidently. It's just that the burst damage right now that Suju had was able to win out. Rogue Warriors are winning in these little fights, but they are losing considerably in the macro because they've lost the first dragon and now they've lost the Rift Herald as well. Yeah, it's great that you're able to take these fights, but you can't keep sacrificing them for objectives. For such a young team, that's all they got, all right? <laughs> it's the fights that won them game one. It's the fight that's beat Suning, honestly. That's something that's been consistent with them and might be able to upset RNG in a possibly two-game series. So, uh, I don't know, man. It, it, it worked in the past, and if RNG keeps slipping, you keep going for it. Well, they've got the chance now. Uzi isn't, you know, fully popped off yet. He's got the Hurricane, he's got the Ginsu's Rage Blade, so that's a lot of attack speed. He should have the Evolved E, if not now, very soon. Yeah. So, he's he's hit a power spike. But that's not to say that Rogue Warriors aren't hitting their own. You know, you have the Iceborne and the Mana Moon on Zhang Wuji, so they're still both competing in items, at the very least. He's certainly scaling, I think, from Uzi's perspective. He needs to get to that Infinity Edge. He already has enough crit, but they're going straight in. Cataclysm right down, followed by the Hero's entrance, but they might be able to take out Karsa before he can do anything. He flashes out to save you for the time being, but Zhao Yun dives in, no problem. Ming Lo as well. They took down the tower at the same time, and now that's two kills. Woo! Vanguard's Edge goes a little bit wide. Xiao Hu has to flash away from the Flawless Duet. Zhang Wuji has the Iceborne Gauntlet, but can't get the slow. No Baron on the map, and Dragon up in 45 seconds. I don't know if it was wide, it was certainly just straight at his head. And it just stopped. It just the, the range was not wide enough. Uzi had covered that distance. It was so close to being able to hit him. And then Huatian would have went in for the kill. That was insane to see how close it was to Uzi to being able to kill. Because right from the get-go, I said two things. I didn't think Uzi had enough damage, and guess what? He didn't. It was the confidence that RNG had, the Galio to follow up, that rises in position for his own ultimate. In the end, though, Karsa goes down way too quickly. And Galio is soon to follow. The moment uh, Shahu ends up joining the play, look at this. The moment Shahu ends up joining the play, the facilitators had already died. And soon Uzi was to follow. It was just real damn lucky that at the end of it, he wasn't hit. Now, RNG have the macro lead for the time being as well. They've dropped the Rift Herald after that fight that went. And uh, it went okay for them. Teleport coming in as well from Zhang Wuji to a safer tier 2 tower. They might be able to take out the Herald before it takes down a tower, and they do. 
Yeah, Zhang Wuzi wasn't the most confident that that tower would end up surviving. He used his teleport on the inner turret to make the distance. No eyes to see how on Dragon's doing. There we go. They know that Dragon's being taken. Sacrificing objective after objective, but now down two dragons. They've got the only two towers on the map, so that's, I mean, that's pretty decent. Lost Chapter now on John Wuji, so they're, they're still in it. The question is, Raz, how much? To be fair, I don't, are you talking about RNG still in it? No, RNG are pretty, I mean, they got Uzi 303. I feel like they're in it. Sir, the gold lead right now is in Rogue Warriors cur court. And just, was, just 2k, though. That's true, but that's why I'm asking the question. Because all while that's the case, but RNG right now, they're scaling to a point where Ryze and um, Ka Kaisa will be doing the damage. But they have a great amount of frontliners, so realistically in a front-to-back setting, they should be fine. It's more of a case of how do these team fights actually look? Because they have not been playing out as most people would have expected. Especially in the previous game, they've been far more chaotic. It's been far harder for the facilitators of Ming and Karsa to be able to last, al like, stay alive in these fights with how much damage Hua Tian and Zhao Yun are considerably doing. So, I am worried for Uzi. I think he is consistently going to be the target from both of these bruisers, and I don't think he can survive that. So, it really is a question about how well he plays, how well Amazing J, once again back into the pop, he can, like, play out these team fights, how many people he ends up popping out. That is a crucial question. I mean, if you're betting any game on any two players, on any two champions, I feel like Amazing J's Poppy and Uzi's Kaisa are pretty safe bets. I thought you were going to say, because I would have agreed with you if you said Uzi's Kaisa and Shahu's Rise. I think those are two very iconic to the player. Ever since Kaisa came out as a champion, like he came out so strong. Of course, it was essentially the more viable vein pick where you can go into Ka uh, team fights dish out the damage and have such insane mobility being able to pick and choose where your fight is going to be starting so um, you're right I mean I, I am not like really even though the goal lead is in favor of rogue warriors there's always in the back of your head that RNG will find a way to outplay it and that Suju on that Elise will start to fall behind I'm just not seeing it right now and I'm seeing rogue warriors coming into a game too if I'm just isolating the rest of the season they're coming into this with better team fights Great defense on uh, mid lane turret, once again, still up for this team. And they've been much smarter around the vision control through mid lane, so I think Rogue Warriors are just playing a better game. Yeah, only one outer tower remaining for them to take until they can start pushing into the jungle of RNG. It's just that mid lane right here. And they're pushing into it, they're trying to do their best, but not quite having success yet. If they get control of that banana bush right now, that has three four. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> It's funny that that's the case, but like, if they get control of that bush, there is so much pressure for Hua Tian to just go straight in because that's the only like difference between RNG being able to get vision right now, as you see they're trying to push for, and you know, Baron buff being rushed. So, oh. of course, RNG punctures straight through that because there's no way for Rogue Warriors uh -oh. to contest. Oh no, Hua Tian, please. Realm Warp down, chasing down onto Hua Tian. Not followed up by Xiaohu though. He won't land the flawless yes. duet either. He is almost certainly dead. Vanguard's Edge will not save you today, sir. Shut down. And you know who's in proper position for Baron? I think RNG should just go for it. They have the members that are in the area. They're only concerned about, of course, Rogue Warriors trying to pick a fight around it. I think they shouldn't be that concerned with Poppy still there. Well, if Xiao Yun gets picked off here, that certainly won't be much of a concern for much longer. He's still oh on God. the Skrull. That's a ton of damage down onto Uzi. He's gotten popped by now. Pocket Pistol not going to land onto Uzi, but Uzi is now forced out of the fight. That's the barren dreams of RNG have now been crushed. RNG got the worst out of that. In a 1v2 scenario, sure. Rogue Warrior's got a little bit of help in that ultimate coming in from Zhang Wuji. Certainly helped by chunking down Uzi. But that was insane, and it all starts from this top lane fight, because I, there were so many ways Hua Tian could have been able to get out of there, and he tried them all. He pushed from the left, he used his ultimate to try and use Poppy, but Poppy just charged right in, so even if he got a dash on him, he would be in the exact same position he already is in. So, I think, uh, very well played from RNG to be able to get the pick. I thought they were going to turn to Baron, it wasn't the case. Um, but now we're back in a neutral state, where Rogue Warriors can easily contest for it. Take a look at that. Come on, Colonel. Where is your faith? Have some faith in the rookies. I mean, what a story. I mean, if they make this, that is like, yeah, LGD are giant killers and all that, but Rogue Warriors, the moment they sub out their only veteran, 
if they take down what is looking to be one of, if not the best team in the league. Yep. In their playoff dreams, stay alive. That's crazy. Four series win streak right now for RNG. The only team that I would look at and say that th that you know is currently stronger is TOP, and I would also make a case for um, Invictus Gaming. But as it stands, RNG are just on top of the world, and right now it's crashing on them. Rogue Warriors have done it. Atlas holding up the world with a broken leg, starting to crumple a little bit. Now Huatian gonna back once again, probably pick up that Sterix. It's okay, Atlas only needs his voice. <laughs> I was I was I was thinking you might go there. I was <laughs> like, alright, he didn't go for it. That's fine, I respect it. I was giving you time. You can set up your play. Yeah. I mean, there's not much play left to set up. You know, they're setting up vision around Baron. That's great. I'm proud of you, RNG. You're still keeping your game together as well as you can, but Bro Warriors. Oh, they're going right. for it. That's a lot of damage too with Kaisa. Oh no, and that's the back from Huang Guy. If they want to fight this, this has got to be the 4v5. It burnt to 4k HP so quickly. They now know how fast they end up doing Baron buff with that one Mountain Dragon and the Kaisa involved. She got an Infinity Edge off of all of that, so she's ready to fight. She got the only three items she really needs this entire game, I feel like. But. I, I want to point something out here, Raz. All right, give it to me. John Wuji, no second tier yet, but has the lost chapter. What happened? Uh, it just always comes down to back timing. He certainly was still uh, building up his first tier. Still didn't get to the second one. So we'll see once he ends up finding that time to back and selling his Doran shield. Uh-oh. They're going for the Baron. 5k. 2k. Oh! oh yeah! He got it! The Baron steal coming in from John Wuji. And now Rogue Warriors walk away victorious. That's what I'm, just take a look at Zhang Wuji. He is just bouncing up on his seat and he has good reason to do so. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's the kind of play you love to see. Karsa had smite and it was still taken away by Zhang Wuji. That's the miracle play. First it was the pentakill out of nowhere. Now it's the Baron Seal out of nowhere. This rookie is looking to make a name for himself. And Raz, I would say he has succeeded. Stay away from the Baron buff when you're going up against Rogue Warriors, man. Just stay away. This is dangerous. That is dangerous territory. What the hell is going on? So they've got Baron buff <laughs> now, Raz. <laughs> so that's, that's two and a half minutes left of that. RNG, um, what? Yeah, let's let's just do this real slow motion, by the way. Oh, yeah. Because we just need to see the exact timing. 750. What level was he? Level 12. Shouldn't have been able to get that. That's crazy. His smite was just off two, so he must have missmited it. That's insane. I don't think he even smited it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I legitimately do not think he smited it. All right. Mad respect to Zhang Wuji. Now he's got the second tier item. And uh, so Raz, I was I was I was talking down on the boys this game. Yes, you I was, were. I was talking. Where was the even the colonel? Even though Rogue Warriors had a gold lead, Colonel Sanders said 51% uh, RNG. Are you kidding me, man? Look, both the colonel and I made mistakes. Yes, you did. And that, I I apologize to Rogue Warriors in earnest. But now, what do I have to do to keep this going? Can they just keep doing what they've been doing and succeed? Let's take a look where Kled is. Oh, before that, they're gonna get opened up on. Oh no. Xiaohu. Huang Guy sacrificing himself once again. Unbreakable Will gonna keep him alive for the time being. Teleport coming in here from Zhao Yun. And Rogue Warriors are still alive. Their jungler has been forced out by the Keeper's Verdict. But Zhao Yun doing so much damage in this fight. Hero's entrance has gone in. Zhao Yun finally gets taken out. But Karsa is well. Zhang Wuji is just free firing in the back. They've taken down two members of Rogue Warriors so far just for the one of RNG. Such a heroic fight from RNG. I said take a look at Zhao Yun because he was right on the money. Push mid lane, slowly get somebody from the RNG side to be able to pick up that wave, and then you got top lane undertow. There's no reason to like speed anything up, but it was Rogue Warriors top side that had just mucked everything, like literally just taking free damage, and it forced Zhao Yun to use his teleport when he was already in the mid lane. He just needed a little bit of time, but they didn't give it to him. Pro Warriors, it's these little macro missteps that are going to win or lose them the game depending on how many they make. It's basically just a numbers game. If they make a few more mistakes, they lose. If they can cut the bleeding now. Oh no. John Wuji. No, 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 no. Yeah, Don't try close, it. man. You know what? Why not? You got the first one. Why not get number two? So Huatian gets stunned right here. 
Shao Hu ends up using his phase rush and everything to just be able to run right in there. So they have to double down. They don't want to lose out in their Alistar. So this is just a really uncomfortable situation for uh, Rogue Warriors, even losing Suju to the ultimate from Poppy. So I just don't like it. Why are you speeding it up that much? Why is Watian pushing up under tower as a melee champion when all you need to do is let the minions do the work? I feel like maybe if Zhao Yun hadn't re-engaged there, they would have been fine because just the threat of his re-engage might have been enough, but that was not the choice RW went for. Yeah, even still, like thinking about it from front to, like from start to finish, just wait for Zhao Yun to push up mid. You have wave after wave with Baron buff, there's no reason to waste it. Now that's just exactly what had happened. They have wasted Baron because of that play. Now a minute left until the Infernal Drake coming in. If Rogue Warriors are able to get this, they are in a ready position as well. Huatian is working on that Guardian Angel, and once he completes that, he can start doing those ridiculous aggressive plays, and Zhao Yun will be finishing that uh, Mark Sim as well, so, or uh, Ball of Malmordius, rather. There we go. And if he does that, maybe he can go for a GA too. Just got it right now, so just off that back, be able to help his team. I want to be able to see um, essentially how effective that dive is going to be. You already saw how much damage Shahu was able to uh, punch through. Has Righteous Glory, you saw from the last fight, was able to find himself in the back line based off that alone. So, we'll have to see what they can end up doing. A lot of vision control there for RNG. This is really dangerous. Huatian, no teleport. Infernal Drake in just 10 seconds. Shoot you. Use Cocoon, but no avail. This comes down to how much they're willing to give up. Because right now, RNG have mid lane push. They can move back down and get Infernal Dragon. Are Rogue Warriors willing to pick up that fight, or do they want to push mid? Because right now, that's a really tough call. Good ultimate there to start off the fight. Zhang Wuji just trying to put out a little bit of poke. Didn't do a whole lot to the beefy tank that is Amazing J, but it did some. They're going for it. They're going for the chase. The re-engage from the side. Amazing J, first one to fall. Realm Warp is there, but I don't know how much he's going to do. Double kill already for Hua Tian. Make that three kills for Rogue Warriors in the fight. And RNG are forced off again. Dive straight through, and there was no way for Xiaohu to be able to join that fight. I want to see where his initial positioning was, because Rogue Warriors was just able to burn straight through Amazing J. When your tank dies that quickly, how can you fight back? They're really trying. The fans are trying to send their energy the best they can, but honestly, I think Rogue Warriors are working off their own energy right now. 20 second death timers. These bruisers will do way too much. Right now, Uzi and Xiaohu need to sit at their own turrets because you cannot walk that far close up to that composition. Baron's up. Just three seconds, Raz. All right. Here we go. I mean, there's no wards here for RNG, so they have nothing that they can utilize. Oh, except for that one. I mean, there's that control uh, ward. How oh, helpful is that going to be? Yeah, I don't know about that one. Yeah. I don't know about that one, Huatian. They've got to play careful. We've seen how quick the Baron can go down for RNG. But RNG are the one that need to start Baron or force the play. Rogue Warriors have the mid lane inhibitor down, so they can just sit around for however long they want. They have the minion advantage. You already see the super minion coming through. RNG are forcing this done desperately. Putting out a lot of damage there from Uzi and Karsa. RW need to threaten this or try and win the Baron again. How many members? I don't think the ult is going to win it. Keeper's verdict onto the jungler forces him out. The Baron should go down. It is taken and secured by RNG, but RW is still putting in so much damage. Wan Guy still alive. Watian diving into the back line. Zhao Yun's here to help him out. Ming is so low. Finally gets taken out. Amazing J, Xiao Hu, and Uzi. The only three remaining for RNG. Zhang oh. Wuji flashes in. 80 carry versus 80 carry. Zhang Wuji wants to make a name for himself here today, and he's going to do it. He takes down Uzi. Uzi, Xiaohu, the last member remaining in the fight. And it looks like Rogue Warriors are pushing down. They're teleporting into the base. And They're right now, it. it's sounding like Beijing's venue. A little bit like a library. They are shocked by the fact that Rogue Warriors are about to 2-0 RNG. I am too. Uh, Shutsu, you need to be careful, man. Nah, let's go. Those Baron minions will do a lot to you. Amazing J trying to get the kill on the Zhang Wuji, but they're going in. They got the Q. They, they trade kills, but Zhang Wuji's still alive. Zhao Yun as well. The ace comes out. Rogue Warrior's still up. Karsa and Ming are the only ones alive, and you need to find a way to push Rogue Warriors back. Rogue Warriors, they're looking for it. The ultimate comes down. Karsa blows up, and Ming, the last one alive. Zhang Wuji just focusing down on the tower as best he can. Zhang Yun as well. And now Ming, he's going to go down. Five this. seconds left on Uzi, but Zhang Wuji is there. Rogue Warriors take the 2 0 against RNG. Their playoff hopes are still alive. The expectation when it was all over. 
You're supposed to go to Beijing. You're supposed to essentially go to your own execution. And guess what happened? Not only did they take the win over RNG, but in a 2-0 fashion. That's insane to see from this rookie lineup. I, I still don't know what I just watched, Raz. I was here the entire time. I am still not sure. I am still processing. The rookie coming up from the LDL, not a single game in the LPL. 2-0 against RNG. You know who this is an indictment on? There's a specific member on RNG that's going to be taking a lot of flack. It's Amazing J. Amazing J had an early goal lead in game one. A lot of the pressure was essentially to play through him. He had two Poppy games in a row. Now, having a, old, a goal lead on Poppy, it's usually hard to see how you can utilize it because he did the right thing, essentially. Look for a mid lane uh, outer turret dive. He didn't have the members. It was only basically him and Shafu. So they didn't have the follow-up and mid lane turret stayed up for so long. If you juxtapose that one with how BLG utilized ADD, completely different. Um, where they had the full siege up mid lane to be able to back up that poppy dive. So that didn't happen. And then the rest of the game was basically a coin flip to see which members he would essentially denying in the team fights with his ultimate. And then in this game, once again difficult. Even in the last fight, denied the Elise. But at that point forward, he got picked off so frequently right at the beginning of the fight. So RNG are going to have to look back, go to videotaping, see what went wrong in these team fights where they were losing their tanks before the fight even started. I, I kind of don't dare to say it in any other situation. Just but say I feel it. Like, who cares about RNG, man? Let's look at Rogue Warriors. Look, they needed to win every single game in playoffs. They took that to heart, and they showed us exactly what someone desperate and hungry can do. They took down the kings of the LPL in kind of insane fashion. Zhang Wuji stole a Baron Hell with yeah. an Ezreal ultimate, while Karsa, 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 I'm just going to say it a third time to make sure right, we know right, who we're talking about, had Smite. That is insane. Rogue Warriors just absolutely put on a clinic in the weirdest way possible, and I am so happy. It's insane, man. Uh, these, this team can make a lot of magic happen. And I think it's not just, of course, Zhang Wuji, because Zhang Wuji, we saw how talented he was on week one. Week one, he was already talented, but the problem was to be able to get out of the laning phase even, right? And it was not him, I mean the rest of the team. Like, Zhang Xiao top lane was oftentimes falling behind. The same went for Hua Tian really early on. This team's journey throughout the split was kind of rough because not only did they end up finding Zhao Yun, you know, having to place him onto the, like, as a starting roster, but then Hua Tian got shipped, you know, phased out. Kong Ming came in, and then finally Hua Tian came back. Ultimately, the fire underneath him pushed him because his laning phase got super, uh, like, strong. He's much better. His team fights was, I would say, much stronger than it was initially as well because it really did feel like nerves played a massive factor in that one. So the other lanes got better. Everyone got better alongside Zhang Wuji, and you finally got to see how the team fights fared when the team was actually able to compete. So, great job for Rogue Warriors, and I think it's only going to get better. Even if they lose out in the playoff situation, even I'm looking far enough to Summer Split, Summer Split's looking real good for this team. Yeah, and no surprise there, Zhang Wuji's going to be your MVP. I mean, did I even have to say it to know it? Because nah, you didn't. You can't just steal a Baron with an Ezreal Ultimate, go 7-0 and 11, and not be MVP. 40% damage percentage huge and i know it's an ezreal game but this one mattered the most because he was able to consistently kite back with it dish out the damage and really make uh, the frontliners honest every single time we saw poppy jump in or jarvin jump in remember this is a very straightforward composition from rng there was no tricks behind it there was no gimmicks it was legitimately just jarvin galio poppy praying frontline and it was the Kaisen Rise trying to follow up. It was just more so how was RNG going to be able to set up for those fights and be consistent to deal with all the dive threats. And it didn't work out. They had Baron, man. Had Baron. <laughs> didn't work out. <laughs> Keyword. So that was real fun to be able to see the X factors come through from Rogue Warriors and I really want to see it keep going. Well, we're going to see RNG again oh, real no. soon. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit scared for it. It's going to be the match of the week versus BLG, but it's going to be a lot closer than we may have thought, right? You know what's fun is that BLG also got upset by Team WE. So both of these teams are going to be coming into this series off an upset. You see that hoodie right now over Shahu looking like he's going to mug Kuro? Guess what? He's angry. The only thing he doesn't know is that Kuro is also equally pissed off. So I think both <laughs> these teams are going to be coming in trying to prove something to the fans out there. And I think... 
really the thing coming in here that I'm excited about is yeah. actually just going to see more Rogue Warriors. I'm going to be entirely honest. Okay, that's fair. Because, like, they're going up against VG, which, like, yeah, sure. Honestly, after they took down RNG, I'm expecting a quick 2-0 from Rogue Warriors. Maybe it's a little too much. Maybe it's a little too much. But they still got the fire from being almost knocked out of playoffs. But the next one after that. So that'll be T-O-P. fun. I think that's going to be real cool to see how Rogue Warriors can fare continuing going forward. You're right. Like, their next series is going to be 2 OP, as you said. I think that one, remember, you're an underdog for a reason. There's no way you're beating right now. I see, I see T.O.P. right now being the, the strongest current te- performing team in the league. So that one, we'll have to see how that one's going to be on Saturday. And then, on Sunday, we get to see BLG versus uh, RNG. And if you're just talking about, like, what is the most important factor for me, it's going to be top lane. Because not only is Amazing Day really have to prove himself coming off of the series and honestly, like, a really weak couple of weeks, um, ADD is so strong right now. His poppy play is definitely above above average. And on top of that, I think that if he goes into multiple carry option, his, I think his Fioro is real and nice as well. He can go just about everything. And I think the team works really well communication-wise to be able to support that. I think, honestly, that series poppy is going to be 100% pick ban. I'm going to call it. I mean, we're going to see. I'm going to call it. We're but see. You're winning out in some of these uh, predictions. Apparently. Yeah, apparently. Damn, I should have gone further because now <laughs> Rogue Warriors 3-8. and eight. I was I was thinking maybe there's a chance, but I was like, nah, there's no way. But now they're no, they're sitting at number 13. Snake as well taking their series 4-8 and eight now. Just remember, like the two teams that we're looking at, Suning and Sino Dragons, have to face each other off in the final day of the spring split. That means that one of these teams are going to come out as sixth. So number six right now is what I'm looking at. You have to get above that point. Right now, if I'm seeing Rogue Warriors, they still have that chance. They have to keep fighting and hoping that Suning and Sino Dragons keep losing games. That's that's a hard hope to have. That's though, hope, man. Honestly, look, Sino Dragon are, I wouldn't say inconsistent, but I'm going to heavily imply it. Because you have games where Xiao Peng just pops off and does all these crazy things, and Twyla's there to back him up, and you have other games where Xiao Peng just isn't a thing. Remember, they upset at the T.O.P. Like, the fact that Sino Dragons, you're right about in the fact like they can punch up above their uh, weight, and sometimes they just, in terms of victories, result-wise, they're very inconsistent. Their strategy going into games are consistent, though. So their strategy is, like, consistent. People know, analysts, when they go into the series, like, we know exactly how they're going to strike, who their carry options are going to be. It's just that we don't know how necessarily their effective, like, team fights are going to be effective. So a lot of green players in that series as well, because they're all rookies as well. The rookies are taking over. What can you really do? I'm just really interested to see how that series is going to run out. Yeah, and we got a little bit more series to go. Okay, to me. We got Friday because everyone's off tomorrow. But on Friday, we're going to have the Chinese broadcast coming. Boom! EDG FPX, baby. EDG is looking so good right now. Just think of this. All of the great top laners that you could ever want right on Friday. So you're going to be talking about Ray, Gimgoon, The Shy, possibly Duke. And then question mark on Vichy Gaming. I mean, they're just kind of just sitting there just in awe at the moment. They're just there. Yeah. So, like, remember, this is going to be uh, Friday is a non-English broadcasting day. So if you want to catch it, those are the Chinese streams to watch. Do you huya. If you want to be able to, like, if you don't, if you can't follow the link, then I'm going to follow me on Twitter. Follow the LPL English on Twitter. We're going to be posting it no matter what. So there will always be League of Legend, Legends, 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 actions out there. There's going to be more League of Leggings as well from us on the English broadcast on Saturday. Yep. So we're going to have a few more matchups, you know. We got a big day. You hate calling them Super Days, but... I hate it. Stop it. My play-by please need to stop calling it (laughs) Super Days. I literally only call it that because I know you don't like it, but V5WE, RWTOP, that's a big one, and JDG versus Sunic. Major playoff implications with Victory 5 versus Team WE. And then apparently TOP and Rogue Wars ain't free either. So, seems like Rogue Warriors need to keep that alive. The fact that they have this hard of a schedule, taking down Ro- uh, RNG, and for whatever reason, their, their blood is pumping right now. They're going to go up against TOP. We have to reiterate, if they lose this series, they're, 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 they're going to they're, they're, they're have to pack at home. So they toast. We'll have to see how they can keep this one rolling. But then the last series for me is real fun. JD versus Suning and what's the e-commerce war. Every time these two teams go up against each other, there's always something on the line. Yeah, I am looking forward to pretty much every Rogue Warriors matchup from now on. I'm just going to say that. But the e-commerce war also promises to be exciting. And we're going to be back on Saturday with more of the English broadcast from myself, from Raz, from our production team. Thank you so much for coming out. And enjoy a little bit of Raz's recaps. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week seven of Raz's recaps. 
we're two weeks off of playoffs time, which means every series counts. And so I'm gonna be moving to the first series of the previous week, which was in Wednesday. FPX against RNG in the cage in Beijing. The global audience right there weren't too happy about the fact that this set was played in 9.2, so the assassin threats were still possible, Doombi could pick up that Akali, but the matchup at the top side of the map between Gimgoon and Amazing J was fun to watch. Gimgoon was getting the best of them, but that was about the mid lane, Xiaohu and Karsa limiting Doombi that mattered the most. That's where the goalie came in to factor. And then this time around, I mean, Amazing J came into the team fight, swept two members out of the pit, FPX doubles down, and even though FPX ended up taking down Baron Buff, guess what? Guess who came back alive when he was able to come in at a flank? Xiaohu. Xiaohu was so influential in this series, this game in particular, that I don't know how they were able to limit him. The fact that the 2v2 in the mid lane matters so much early on in this game, you better believe that Doombi comes into the, the game ender in this series with the Scion pick. He has never been pushed out of lane on Scion in this series, had to face a new reality come into another gold deficit into a team fight, this is where your eyes once again shifts onto the Syndra, see what Xiaohu's doing, comes at a flank seemingly, so much damage into the back line. So the AD carry, I mean Uzi was sitting comfortable, but it was LWX that had to be sweating. So hats off to FPX coming into the series with a victory over Invictus Gaming, but team fights was FPX were looking for, and it was RNG that came out of Beijing high that day. I think Xiaohu gets MVP constantly on that one. I mean, I'm happy about that. And off this performance, unsurprisingly gets best of the rift in the mid lane. So congratulations to him to be able to be that sole carry and pick up a win for RNG. And for our next series, we have Suning versus BLG. BLG's been riding that high, but this is where tough schedule starts coming into order. Suning have been losing series after series. They're coming off a of victory versus LGD. It didn't feel like it and going up against ADD and Kuro, who are so sky high. Take a look at what ADD sets up for his team here. Amazing flank onto SMLZ, who is incredibly like, strong for himself, been able to farm up a menace, gets picked off instantly, and then the rest of the team loses out in the engage as Jin Zhao finds himself alongside Kuro at the back. Look at them kiting throughout the terrain. So if I'm looking at how BLG has been performing up until this point, they have been spot on. This was a slow series just because both of these teams coming into it have had the lowest bloodiness rate between both of them. I want your eyes to focus on this. This was earlier on in the game. This was ADD setting up a flank, getting a knockback into the sleepy trouble bubble. That was the second time that's happened this series. It feels like they've been practicing that one because it's very comfortable for them. So BLG looks so good. I already feel pretty comfortable in their playoff spot. And after this series, I know that it's only getting better. So. I want all your eyes to be focused on how those two Korean imports have been playing and Jin Zhao who was an honest Kalista pick finding himself on a flank position. This was a clean sweep, 2-0 and I'm only focused now a ways ahead. Next week for BLG, they're going up against RNG, let's see how they take it. And now we go back to our match of the week, FPX going up against T.O.P. Doombi. Not looking like he's jovial this time around. He's deadly serious because he's going up against the golden left hand of Knight. Knight has been spot on, picking up MVP after MVP unsurprisingly. And now it's going to just be man versus man, 2v2 matchup. This time around, FPX going straight for the early game. And they put 369 er behind early, so this was FPX getting that early advantage, but TOP bringing it on back. It feels like in both the series FPX has had this week, they've been losing out in team fights. XX with an excellent ultimate, being able to pick out that back line. And so for FPX, losing out. In fact, 369 later on in that game getting a solo kill where he was behind for the majority of it. Wonderful to be able to pick up that victory. And they take the series as well, back off of Knight's quirky pick, going on in 131. This team looks deadly. Team fight, macro, it's just insane to be able to see T.O.P. performing and they net themselves a first place spot in the LPL with that victory. And that does it for this week's Raz Recaps. You know how it goes, my player of the week, and you shouldn't be surprised about this, goes to RNG's Shahu. Shahu usually takes some time before he comes into playoff mode, but he's actually just getting into it. He's been a primary carry for the team, 
The team has recognized that. Cars is going straight through mid. I hope to see this play style going into playoff time because I don't want to see, once again, going to international events and we have the Uzi show. Put some faith in the man. Put him on LeBlanc, put him on Syndra. That's what he's currently doing and he's thriving on it. All right, I'll see you guys next week for week eight, Raz Recaps.